as I had some issues with the EVGA Supernova 2000 watt G plus power supply unit, which I already uh, mentioned quite thoroughly on my overclocking event summary video, which I posted on my channel quite recently. The unit did work at the very beginning, but uh, when we were just about to start benching on LN2, when I was about to turn on the system, I could hear like an audible like bang from the power supply unit. And then we suddenly lost part of the fuses from the room where we were benching. Then I tried to troubleshoot the issue and all of the main voltages from the power supply seemed fine. There was no obvious short circuit that I could see. So I honestly think that something from the input side of the power supply unit went into short circuit. So uh, bad luck. No damn idea why I had some unfortunate issues with the power supply unit. So uh, I sent the faulty power supply back to EVGA in Taiwan. And after discussing a little bit, we agreed that I would get the Supernova 1600 watt T2 power supply unit as replacement. I honestly think that the 1600 watt T2 power supply is still the very best power supply that EVGA ever released to the retail market. 1600 watt is their largest wattage among their power supplies up until the 2000 watt G plus power supply unit, which I already used uh, on my channel. They did showcase the 2200 P2 power supply unit back in uh, CES of 2018, I believe, and also during Computex of that very same year. But sadly, that power supply model never made it to the retail market, and I don't know why. It could be like question marks about possible sales or something like that. It's uh, quite hard to say that is there still very high demand for so large power supply units in the future. The biggest question mark will be about cryptocurrencies and cryptocurrency mining. As the whole cryptocurrency market is coming down, like now very lately, the whole like overall trust in cryptocurrencies is coming down as well. And if cryptocurrency mining is coming down rapidly, it means we should see a lot of used high-end graphics cards and also high wattage power supply units coming for sale. And then there would be less need or demand for so large power supply units. When it comes to high-end PCs like gaming PCs or workstation machines, it's quite hard to say that do we need so large power supply units in the future. Yes, many of the modern components, they are drawing a lot more power than before, like CPUs and even graphics cards. We have RTX 3090 Ti that needs the new connector, which can supply up to 600 watts through just a single connector. But we don't have massive multi-GPU configurations anymore. We haven't had three-way SLI and four-way SLI since GDX 1080 Ti. We still have two-way SLI, but it's quite rare. And it's very possible that in the future, in very near future, we might not have SLI at all anymore overall. So it's possible that in two or three years from now, the basic very high-end PC will be about high-end CPU and a single high-end graphics card. So in modern components, that would be like 5950X, Ryzen CPU from AMD, high-end motherboard, and a single RTX 3090 or 3090 Ti, and large amount of good performance memory, and that's it. And that doesn't need 2000 watt power supply or 2200 power supply. As you can imagine, you would be completely fine with 1200 watt power supply or 1300 watt power supply, whatever. And then it's also quite problematic to sell so large power supply units worldwide. As far as I know, 1600 watt power supply unit is the largest wattage amount you can sell throughout the world, including like United States and so on, which have 110 to 120 volt mains power. All of those very large units like the Superflower Leadex 2000 watt 8 pack and the 2050 watt unit from Thermaltake, if, I'm, if I remember correctly, they are EU only power supplies. So they can only be used in countries which have 220 to 240 volt mains power. That's kind of annoying feature, as you can imagine, from manufacturer's point of view, I mean. When it comes to like high-end PCs, in my use, the only case where I really need these very large power supplies like the 2000 watt Superflower or the 1600 watt T2 from EVGA is extreme overclocking, because when you really push components very far, they can draw a lot of power in like short peaks. 
If you watched my Elmer Labs PMD video where I overclocked the 28 core Xeon just for water cooling, the highest peak power was 1450 watts just on water cooling through two EPS 12 volt 8 pin power connectors. So that means over 700 watts through single 8 pin connector. So that's a huge amount of power and it wouldn't be possible on many power supplies on the market. And for that kind of use, you also need a single rail power supply unit. That's why all of the uh, like very high end power supplies that are geared towards overclocking use, they are always single rail power supplies. For that kind of use case, you want to have as large single rail on the 12 volt as possible, as you can imagine. But even as such, these units are still very awesome for daily use. Usually power supplies have the best efficiency level somewhere around 50% of the official rating or tiny bit under 50%. When I was watching the test graphs of the 1600 watt T2 over at Cybernetics, which is a very awesome website for power supply reviews and so on. You should definitely check it out. They have lots of very interesting information about different power supply units. It's a little bit different or it's a little bit similar to Johnny Guru website, which uh, was very popular back in the day or even just a few years ago. And uh, they had in their testing, they had the best efficiency with this power supply unit somewhere around 500 to 800 watts. When uh, they tested the uh, unit for the second time uh, with 230 volt mains power, they had almost 95% efficiency at that power uh, level, like between 500 watts and 800 watts. To get the 80 plus titanium uh, rating certificate, you need to have, or the power supply needs to have at least 91% efficiency level at 100% load. So in this case in 600 watt output power and the power supply or this model had almost 93% efficiency level at 1600 watt output power and they actually went over the official rating of 1600 watts. They, I think the maximum power they used was 1750 to 1800 watts output power and uh, even with that level the efficiency level was still over 92%. So that's definitely amazing result. So that's why that already shows how awesome power supply unit the Supernova 1600 Watt T2 already is. So if I was EVGA, I would look at the uh, different designs as they have many power supplies out there on the market, find the possible like reasons why some specific power supply models have had issues and try to go back to the very best power supply models they have released to the market. So uh, if you ask me or if I was EVGA, I would have never released the 2000 watt G plus power supply unit to the market. I would have released the 2200 P2 power supply model instead. EVGA is a little bit different like vendor when it comes to power supplies. They usually sell power supplies that are based on other manufacturers hardware design. So all of these very best units that they have ever sold, so the P2s and the T2s and so on, they have been based on Superflower's design. It's like this is technically pretty much the same power supply unit as the Superflower Leadex Titanium 1600 watt power supply unit. If you look if you check both of the models on Google, for example, you can see that they look pretty much the same. Only the actual casing of the power supply unit is a little bit different. The overall dimensions are the same. And if you look at the output side of the unit, for example, the fan eco mode on and off switch is pretty much on the same spot on both of the units. Now, uh, some of the later units which have come out to the market during this year and also in 2021, mainly the uh, G6 and P6 models. And I think there's also P7 or G7. They are usually based on Seasonic design. Seasonic is also a very large power supply manufacturer and many other vendors sell Seasonic power supplies through their own branding as well. And some of the newer ones as well, like the Plus models, like the 1300 watt P Plus, the 1600 watt P Plus, and now I'm sure the 2000 watt G plus, they are based on uh, some Chinese 
company called FSB's design. So it's very possible that the FSB design might have some potential errors compared to the Superflower and Seasonic designs. For example, the 1600W T2 is larger in physical dimensions than the 2000W G+. Usually, the larger the wattage count is, the larger the power supply also is in physical dimensions, I mean. But the 1600W T2 is actually 2 centimeters longer power supply unit than uh, the 2000W G+. This particular uh, power supply unit is very large. It's over 22 centimeters long, so it's a very large power supply unit. For example, if we compare that power supply to the Seasonic Prime 1300W Platinum power supply, you can see the massive difference in physical dimensions. So imagine the Seasonic Prime 1300W is just this small and it's still a 1300W power supply, whereas the EVGA is a 1600W titanium rated power supply and it's like 5 centimeters longer. And if you ask me, when it comes to power supplies, larger means better nearly all of the time. As this is much larger unit, they can put a lot more high-end components inside the power supply chassis. That means the unit itself will run cooler and it should be a lot more reliable and it should have a longer lifespan. Power supply is a pretty good like PC component in a way that you don't need to upgrade it very constantly. Massive like updates in uh, like connectors are very rare, like what, we'll, what we will see very soon with the new PCI Express power connector. If there are no major updates on the connectors themselves or like compatibility issues what we saw with Intel Haswell back in 2013, you can use, if you are lucky and there's no uh, like damage, you can use a very high-end power supply unit like the 1600W T2 for up to 10 or 15 years. So even if you upgrade your whole PC, the other internal parts like the CPU, graphics card memory, etc., you can recycle the old and very reliable power supply from the old PC and combine it with the new parts inside the new PC. I'm sure you get what I mean. So uh, for example, the Superflower 2000W 8-pack Platinum, it was released in January of 2015. So seven and a half years ago, but I still consider that power supply model as one of the best power supply models on the market. And it's technically the same stuff as the EVGA Supernova 1600W T2, P2, etc. So I plan on using the Superflower 2000W unit as well as this one, hopefully for many years to come. Yeah, so that's pretty much the situation with EVGA power supplies. As I don't have the cables that originally come with this unit, I, I only have the uh, cables of the faulty 2000 watt G plus unit. I need to find out that can I use those cables with this unit over here. As both of the units are EVGA on the paper, the main difference is in the internal design. So this is a Superflower design, the 2000 watt G plus is FSB design. So uh, power supply cables at the device end, so the part that connects to the motherboard or the graphics card, they are standardized. So they have standard, they are always the same. But the uh, power supply side of the cables, they don't have any specific standard. So the pinout at the power supply's end can vary. So you should never mix power supply cables from two different models just like that without doing any kind of like background work and actually sometimes you need to even measure the continuity or resistance of the individual cables to see that can you actually use them because the pinout can be different, the uh, voltage on some specific pin per connector can be different on some other power supply model so you could damage something if you uh, just randomly mix power supply cables. But when I checked custom cable sets from CableMarts.com they only have like general E-series uh, cable kit for EVGA power supplies and also for the Superflower power supplies at the same time. So based on their compatibility list, the same custom cable kit should fit the 2000W G+, the 1600W T2 and also the Superflower Leadex 8-pack Platinum and all of the Superflower high-end power supplies. So that's a very good thing if you ask me if it's true because I need to get
some custom cables as I have some damaged connectors on my Superflower power supply unit and uh, it would be ideal to be able to use those custom cables if needed be with this unit and with the 2000 watt G plus if I still get to use that unit some at some point later on. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So recently the 1600 watt T2 as well as the P2 they were on sale on EVGA.com, their website store for pretty good price. So if you are interested in some uh, like very reliable and high-end power supply, if you need a lot of power, you should definitely check out the 1600 watt T2. It's still a very good power supply unit. As far as I know, none of the newest power supply units, they still don't have the new ATX power connector by default. So we need to use adapters at the time of making this video to power on the RTX 3090 Ti and so on. But yeah, so that's pretty much it. So uh, huge thanks to Kimpin and other guys over at EVGA for providing this uh, power supply unit. It will be put to good use and uh, yeah, let's hope, let's hope that it will last for a very long time and let's see how it compares to uh, other power supplies that I've had over here this far. So uh, if you found this video helpful and if you like to hear about my like own comments and like experiences with EVGA power supplies in general and some insights about EVGA power supplies then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Maybe check out my Patreon page as well if you want to support my work and thanks for watching one of my videos once again and I will see you on the next one.